clinical data standards. So why do we need clinical data standards? Well, basically, for sponsor companies to collect, compile, analyze, and present clinical data in a consistent format that can be submitted to regulatory authorities for review. So basically what this means is we want to have a standard that all uh, pharma companies or, or other biotech companies can collect data and put it in a format that's going to be fairly consistent. So the standards help improve data management practices, uh, enabling sponsors to submit high quality data for approval, which of course is the ultimate goal of our clinical trial. So having standards helps facilitate uh, these functions. Our learning objectives for clinical data standards include uh, discussion of data quality. We also want to understand standards for collecting and analyzing clinical data. And we want to define CDISC standards, in particular CDASH, SDTM, uh, ADAM, and I'm going to talk about those in more detail. And then we're going to define and discuss some of the CDISC uh, glossary of terms. So this quote here sort of sums up the importance of having clinical data standards. As you can see here, the quote is, in God we trust, all others must bring data. And that comes from the, the elements of statistical learning uh, citation there below. So let's talk about data quality and more importantly, um, how do we ensure data quality? As we've seen earlier, we have a nice little acronym called ALCOA, which helps us sort of understand that and put it in some perspective. So if we look at our acronym, accurate is what the A stands for, and that means to it accurately captures source data and also provides some type of audit trail. And then our data needs to be legible, so it needs to be clearly written and it must be human readable. So even if it's in an electronic form, we need to be able to, to view that data and tell exactly what it is. It also needs to be complete and contemporaneous. So it needs to have no missing data, it must be date and time stamped, so we know when it was entered and we know uh, who it was entered by. It also needs to be original, which means it's an accurate transcription from source data. So if you think back to our CRF uh, data entry exercise that we did, uh, it's going to, that's, uh, we're looking to make sure that what we transcribed onto our CRF page is accurate uh, and with accurate with the source. And also it needs to be attributable. So whoever recorded the data, uh, it needs to, we need to be able to identify who that person was. And we also need to know whether or not they were authorized to do so. So this is one way in which we help ensure data quality. So how do we achieve quality? We achieve it by adhering to standards for collecting and working with clinical data. So what I'd like for you to do is to view this very short uh, video about CDISC. It's only about two minutes and I put, posted the link on there. You probably need to pull up the, uh, the PDF version of this presentation in order to find it on YouTube. Uh, but I think, you'll, uh, I think you'll enjoy watching it. It's, like I say, it's only about two minutes, so it won't take you very long to view. So the video that you just looked at described the Clinical Data Interchange Standards Consortium, or CDISC. Now, what is CDISC? It's a global, open, multidisciplinary, vendor neutral, nonprofit standards developing organization. It was founded in 1997 and then later incorporated in 2000. So it consists of 260 organizational members, and they come from academia, they come from biopharma, service and technology providers, vendors, uh, etc. CDIS has established a worldwide industry standards to support the electronic acquisition, exchange, submission, and archiving 
of clinical research data and the metadata that's associated with it. So doing this helps improve the uh, data quality and it streamlines the medical and biopharmaceutical product development and research processes. The standards are freely available. You can find them on the CDISC website, which I've posted there. And we're going to go over a couple of them as we move along. So the CDISC vision is to inform patient care and safety through higher quality medical research. So the ultimate goal, of course, is to conduct clinical trials, to co collect data in clinical trials and provide them in a standard format so that they can be easily analyzed and hopefully support our, uh, our regulatory submission so that we can get our product approved for marketing and get it out to patients. So this is the CDISC uh, mission statement. As we said, it's a global, open, multidisciplinary nonprofit organization that's establishing standards for, for clinical data acquisition and exchange. Um, its overall mission is to develop and support global platform independent data standards that enable information system interoperability to improve medical research and related areas of healthcare. So CEDA standards are vendor neutral. They don't support one company versus another. They're platform independent, so they're not supporting one product over another product. And more importantly, they're freely available via the CDISC uh, website. Among the CDISC core principles are to lead the development of standards that improve efficiency while supporting the scientific nature of clinical research, to recognize the ultimate goal of creating regulatory submissions that allow for flexibility in scientific content and are easily interpreted, understood, and navigated by regulatory reviewers. And then to acknowledge that the data content, structure, and quality of the standard data models are of paramount importance, independent of implementation strategy and platform. The core principles also include uh, maintain a global multiple, multidisciplinary cross-functional composition for CDISC and its working groups, to work with uh, other professional groups to encourage that there is maximum sharing of information and minimum duplication of effort, and to provide educational programs on CDISC standards, models, values, and benefits, and finally to accomplish the CDISC goals and missions without promoting any individual vendor or organization. This page shows you the uh, foundational standards and other products that are available via CDISC. Uh, as you see across the top, in the first row, we go from planning to data collection to data tabulations, and then finally to analysis. If you'll think back to our lecture on the various phases of clinical trials, we started out with our protocol, then we moved through phases one, uh, one through four uh, after completing our preclinical um, uh, research. And this works in, in very much the same way. So uh, the products that we're going to take a look at today are going to be the C-Dash products, which uh, refer to the data collection aspects of the CDS standard. We're also going to look at the SDTN products and also the analysis data model products. Uh, then finally, down at the bottom, we're going to look at, in some detail, the glossary. So we're going to get familiar with that. So these are the three different products or four different products that we're going to go over uh, today. This graphic helps you see that timeline in a, maybe a little bit more detail. As we look in the upper left corner, we start out with our protocol and then we go through our form setup and configuration. Think of that as our CRF design or database design function that you'll remember back from earlier lectures. We also have our, our data capture 
module. We're going to use our C-dash standards for that. And then once we get into our data management um, issue, now we're talking about cleaning our database, issuing queries, making changes, those types of activities. And then our final stage, we're going to have our analysis stage uh, where we're going to analyze all of our clinical data for safety and efficacy. And then we're going to go through the submission uh, and or reporting stage where we're doing our submittal to a regulatory authority. And then the regulatory authority is going to review that. So these are the different uh, stages that our trial goes through. And then the standards that we use that are uh, conducive to those, each of those stages is listed just below there. So the first product that we want to talk about is C Dash. So what is C Dash? Well, C Dash is Clinical Data Acquisition Standards Harmonization. It was developed with participation from organizations in all three of the ICH regions, which are the United States. Europe and Japan and we have the standard describes the basic recommended data collection fields uh, for 16 domains and you'll recognize these as we go through them. These are going to include um, domains such as demographics, adverse events and other common domains that are common to most therapeutic areas and phases of clinical research. We also have the C Dash implementation guide, and this guide includes the best practice recommendations, the regulatory references, and other information that's on the on the C Dash product. And we're going to go over that uh, implementation guide as we go along. So, a little more detail about C Dash. It's a set of content standards. Um, its initial scope was to cover uh, 16 core safety domains. Uh, the term CRF, or case report form, is used throughout this document. It refers to both paper and electronic formats, unless it's otherwise specified. It is not uh, a series of CRF uh, layouts. In other words, we've got fields that refer to the fields that are commonly seen on a case report form. And then we have variables that refer to what is seen in the clinical database. Then finally, we've got um, study treatment has been used to in order to include all types of study design and products. And then finally, we have different data collection mechanisms that can be used to control how data are collected. For example, tick boxes, check boxes, radio buttons, drop down lists, etc. You guys are all familiar with these because you've seen them in the past in other environments. But then these terms are they're sometimes used interchangeably. So who uses C Dash? Well, basically anyone involved in the planning, collection, management, and analysis of clinical trials and clinical data would use it. This would include investigators, medical monitors, clinical research associates clinical study coordinators, clinical data managers, uh, clinical database programmers, biostatisticians, uh, drug safety associates, uh, case report form designers. So basically anyone that's involved in, in the process of collecting, cleaning, and ensuring the integrity of clinical trial data is going to be associated, going to use this C Dash standard. How is it used? It's basically used by through the C Dash implementation guide. This explains how data should be organized and includes uh, five separate sections. So, section one includes your orientation, which discusses the purpose and goals of the C Dash project. Um, also, some organization of the C Dash uh, standard version 1.0. And then, section two. Um, includes the C Dash alignment with other standards, uh, in particular the uh, study data tabulation model, um, as well as some others. And then in section three, we have best practice recommendations. These are for creating data collection instruments or case report forms, or it could be referring to electronic 
uh, uh, data capture screens that a site might see in a, in, a, in a clinical database that they have access to. It also contains a frequently asked questions section. Then section four is going to be the overview of the C-Dash domain tables. As we mentioned, there are, there are 16 of those. Uh, there are new ideas and approaches uh, recommended by the C-Dash domain teams. Um, and then also some data collection fields uh, noted not necessary to collect. And it also explains the table headers that are used in the domain tables. And then finally, section five, there are the C-Dash domain tables. So this slide illustrates those 16 C-Dash domain tables. These are the, the 16 primary domains that exist that are fairly common in most clinical trials. And you've seen these before in some of the exercises that we've done. For example, you've got adverse events, uh, you've got comments, you have prior and concomitant medications, uh, a demographics page, disposition, drug accountability, um, ECG test results, exposure, um, inclusion exclusion criteria, laboratory re test results, medical history, physical exam, protocol deviations, subject characteristics, substance use, and vital signs. So several of these you've seen before in our data entry exercises. For example, concomitant medication pages, medical history, physical exam, adverse events, uh, as well as a few others. So our implementation guide provides tables explaining the data elements of each of the 16 domains. <coughs> so it probably would be beneficial for you to download the, the C-Dash implementation guide. I've posted it up on Blackboard for you. And then you can, uh, you can look those up uh, as we go along, but I'm going to show you some examples of that as we go along as well. So let's talk about the domain tables and what they look like and the type of information that's contained in them. I've pulled up a portion of a page that would be similar to almost all the pages in the implementation guide in the domain tables, at least. And let's take a look at the top uh, row here that's going to appear, that's going to be consistent throughout the uh, guide. So first of all, uh, moving from left to right, you've got the question text, and this is going to contain the question text for the data collection field. Then next to that, you're going to have the prompt, which is going to be the label for the data collection field. And then next, you'll have the C-Dash variable name. <coughs> this is going to be the suggested variable name. I'm going to skip over the bridge text because it doesn't necessarily apply to what we're doing here. Then in the next column, you have the definition, which describes the purpose of the field. Then you'll have the CRF completion instructions. Uh, these are going to tell the clinical site how to enter the data. And then you've got in the next column information for sponsors. Uh, this would include how to implement CRF collection fields. And then finally, in that last column, which is the core column, these are going to be the C dash instructions for basic data collection. And it's going to be defined. I'm going to define it on the next slide. So the core designations for basic data collection fields. These include essentially three designations. We have a highly recommended designation. What this means is this is a data collection field that should be on the case report form. You know, for example, it might be a regulatory requirement. So it's highly recommended that we include that in our case report form. Then we have a recommended slash conditional um, core designation. <coughs> this would include a data collection field that should be collected on the CRF for specific cases or to address study specific requirements. And it may be recorded elsewhere in the CRF or from some other data collection source. And then finally, we have an <clears throat> optional 
<clears throat> which means a data collection field <clears throat> that is available for use if needed. So let's take a look at some C dash domain examples and we have a little practical exercise using one of our CRF pages um, from the data entry exercise that will help us illustrate that. So if we remember back to our data entry uh, exercise, we were talking about our, our HB 451 study. The principal investigator was Dr. Hartley Burns. And you'll recognize this page from that exercise. This is a portion of our medical history page. So let's take a look at the information, the demographic information that appears across the top. So we have subject initials. We have the subject ID. And then next to that, we have the date. And of course, we all know that that's the date that we collected the medical history for that particular patient. So let's take a look at the, uh, the date field there, if you will. So I've highlighted it in red, and then I've also highlighted the C dash standard for that particular field. As you can see, it's going to be the medical history date, and it's the C dash standard. 5.13.11. So if we look in our implementation guide, we can very quickly go to section 5, because that's where the domain tables are housed. But then we can quickly find um, section 13.11. And in that table, it will explain a little bit more in a little more detail kind of the components of that particular field and how we would deploy that. So let's take a look at what the guide uh, tells us about uh, this date for medical history. So if we go to section 5.13.11, this is what our page looks like. This is a portion of that page. As you see out here in, in the first column, it says 1-1. Uh, one, one. That refers to the particular question that we're talking about. We're talking about uh, the medical history date. So going back to the contents of our table, our question text is going to be what was the date that the medical history was collected. And then if we look at the prompt, it's going to be the collection date. And then in that third column, we have a C dash variable name. And you'll see that as MHDAT. And that's going to refer to the variable that is in our database of where that particular piece of information is going to be collected and stored. So if we were to go look at our annotated CRF and go find the, uh, the medical history page and find the date that we're going to record the medical history page, we would see in, in red lettering uh, that variable name, MHDAT. Uh, this is a, the recommended variable name so that we don't confuse it with other variables. Uh, that CDS recommends that we use. It doesn't mean we have to use it, but it's probably a good idea to use either that very name or something pretty close to it. So if we look at the definition page, definition uh, or column rather, the definition column says the date on which the medical history was collected. So and then in our CRF completion instructions, this is what the site is going to see when they, if they have a question about what what to record in that field, it's going to indicate to record the date on which the medical history was taken using this format. And it gives a, a format with uh, the day of the month, and then the, the month, and then the, the four-digit year. Um, and then finally, in the final column there, we have some instructions or information for sponsors uh, that explains in a little more detail how that gets mapped to our system data tabulation module or model. And then finally, in the last column, we have our core column. Remember, we had highly recommended. We had um, optional. Um, and in this case, uh, this is an optional field, but probably one that we certainly would want to include uh, on our CRF page. So we have some recommendations for how we would implement the C dash standard. Now, first of all, uh, for comments, we want to avoid the creation of general comments, uh, CRF pages or CRF sections. 
Um, these, these are very difficult, as we've said before, very difficult to analyze. It's hard to code them. So we probably want to keep that to a, to a minimum. Um, in the inclusion exclusion criteria, we want to make sure that we use inclusion exclusion uh, form, that domain, to collect only the criterion or criteria that's not met. And then uh, for the physical exam, uh, we want to record only whether or not an exam was done on the physical exam page. So many times clinical sites are asked to record baseline abnormalities on the medical history page or maybe the targeted medical history or baseline conditions uh, case report form page. So we would want to record on our physical exam and this would be something that we would put in our CRF completion guidelines. You know, for example, the patient had a colonoscopy. You know, we probably want to just indicate that on there and then we can go back to the medical history um, or the um, or maybe the adverse event page for a little more clarification on why they needed that. Um, finally, protocol deviations. We really want to avoid creating a, pro a protocol deviations case report form uh, as this information can be derived from other domains or system functionalities. For best practices, you'll see, you'll recognize some of these from our CRF design module. Um, we want to use uh, yes, no questions. Uh, we're, those are preferable over check all that apply type of questions. Um, we want to have a standard order for the yes, no response. Uh, keep it in the same order. We want to use an unambiguous date format. As you can see here, the preferable date format is two digits to identify the day of the month and then three letters to identify the month of the year and then finally four digits to identify the year. Uh, if we're recording times it's best to use a 24-hour clock and even using the format here where we've got uh, the hours followed by the minutes followed by the seconds uh, it's sometimes necessary to do that depending on what the nature of that field is. Uh, find, we want to have manually calculated fields should not typically uh, be recorded. We want to have data that are collected on case report forms should be entered into the database. So we don't want to collect something on a case report form that we're not going to enter into our database because otherwise we're not going to be able to analyze that. So what's the point of recording it on a case report form? Uh, we want to have the yes-no uh, exam completed is referable to uh, check if not done. So, uh, so if we're doing a, a physical exam, for example, we want to ask, you know, was the physical exam completed, yes or no? Uh, you know, not check if it's not done. Then uh, data should not be pre-populated on a CRF. So we want to limit that as much as possible. Remember earlier I showed you some examples of case report forms where they already had the first two digits of the year already populated on the CRF page. Um, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and leave those blank. Let's go ahead and have the site record what the actual year is for a date, for example. And then the C dash standard recommends not providing actual coding dictionaries to the sites for adverse events, concomitant medication, or medical history because it can sometimes promote biases. We talked about the coding dictionaries in our last lecture and what we really want to do with these sites for collecting uh, adverse event, concomitant medication, and medical history data is we want to collect from them the verbatim. And then from there, once we know what the verbatim is, then we can begin to code that and clean that data if, if necessary to make it more consistent as, as part of the coding, using the coding dictionary process. And then finally, we have to provide CRF completion guidelines. And I'll show you some examples of those. If it's a paper study, it's probably going to, it may be printed on the back of the CRF form. It may be provided to them in the form of a Microsoft Word document or a PDF document. Uh, if it's an EDC study, many times it'll just be programmed into that particular 
field so they can press a help button and then the CRF completion information comes up right there for that specific page and field for them. So we've been talking about C Dash, and of course C Dash is going to be very instrumental uh, in our CRF development process. So this um, flowchart here shows you the CRF development workflow. So if we start over in the upper left corner, we start out of course with our approved protocol, or at least a protocol that's kind of at a at a stable point. We may need to amend it as we go along, which is not unusual at all. And then from there, we're going to start to draft our case report forms. And again, we're going to use the C-Dash implementation guide to help us do that. Uh, we would also start programming our clinical database at that point, creating it as well. Uh, we want to modify the case report forms that are going to be specific to our study, to our protocol. And then that's going to be reviewed by cross-functional teams. So you'll have some people that are and our medical monitoring staff, our data management staff, quality assurance, um, clinical, uh, uh, clinical, um, our clinical team, and then we may have people on the safety team that are in, uh, associated with that. Uh, so we have a cross-functional team that's going to be uh, reviewing those case report forms. So as you can see in the next stop, do we need to make changes? If we do, then we go back and create some more modification. If we don't, where everyone feels like they're in pretty good shape, then we can finalize the, the draft case report forms, then send them back to our cross-functional team for final approval. And then once we've got them approved, then we're going to implement them into our study, and our process will be complete at that point. So this graphic basically illustrates the primary flowchart for our case report form development process. So we've talked about the uh, C Dash um, implementation and, and how we would use it. Uh, what are some of the challenges that are associated with it? Well, first of all, the C Dash domain specifications you know need to be transferred to electronic data capture eCRF specifications. So they're a little bit different. Then finally, uh, C Dash is not necessarily conducive to database design. A good example would be when our vital signs domain has one variable for test result, and this needs to cover all tests, for example, height, weight, etc. Where in our database, we're going to have different database variables are needed for each of those. So that's kind of a, a discrepancy there that could, that could create a little bit of a problem for us. Um, it also necessitates the creation of non-C dash database variables, which can be mapped to uh, SDTM. Then finally, some of the C Dash domains can be collected more or once or many times during the course of a study. So, what this means is that you know, more than one ECRS standard may be needed for a C Dash domain. So, these are some of the challenges that we have in implementing C Dash with our CRF development. So one of the other CDISC standards that I mentioned earlier was SDTM or Study Data Tabulation Module or Model. Uh, SDTM defines a standard structure for clinical trial data tabulations and for non-clinical study data tabulations that are to be submitted as part of a product application to a regulatory authority such as the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. So what this means is that our data is going to appear in this particular standard structure so that when they receive it at the uh, Food and Drug Administration, or if we were to provide it to some other entity, uh, we might be working with another, um, another pharmaceutical company, for example, and we may need to provide data to them uh, for whatever reason. So if we provide it to in a SDTM format, then it's in a standard format that they can use and, and, and they can see it and they can understand what they have. So that's the purpose of the study data tabulation model. Another CDS standard that you'll come across is going to be the analysis data model, or some people refer to it as ADAM. Uh, the analysis data model standard uh, is for interchange of analysis data that's submitted 
for a statistical as a statistical review aid. So this is usually uh, used to communicate analysis data to regulatory authorities. And then once we do that, uh, they're going to take the data that we provided for them in the SDTM format, and they're going to try to come up with the same analysis, try to duplicate the uh, the analysis that we came up with. So this format helps helps them to do that. And then finally, the last last CDIS product that we're going to talk about is going to be the CDIS glossary. So what this is, this defines the terms that are commonly used in clinical research. It also includes acronyms, abbreviations, and initials. Uh, this glossary serves the community of clinical researchers by selecting and defining terms pertaining to clinical research. <coughs> it's available as a PDF file. You can also download it as a Microsoft Word document uh, format. And the best part of all is that it's free. So if you can see the link there, that's where you can download the CDIS glossary from. I've also made a copy of the PDF version of the glossary available on Blackboard. So you can easily just uh, download that and store it on your local computer. It's a good idea to have a copy of this. Not, this is not a printed out copy, uh, but have access to it pretty readily as you're working in research because you're going to come across terms that you're not familiar with. Or if you're like me, you come across terms that you've seen over and over again, but you don't remember what they mean. So it's a good idea to pull this up and, and research terms that you're not familiar with and, and gain a little more understanding of it. So this is a very indispensable resource for anyone that's working in clinical research. So finally, we're now at the point where everyone's waiting for their Blackboard assignment. So what I'd like for you to do is I want you to download and review the CDIS glossary. Don't read the whole thing. I don't want you to do that. But I want you to just kind of look through it and kind of be familiar with the content of it. And then also the C- implementation guide. I uh, don't expect you to read it, but I do want you to just kind of look through it and be familiar with it. And then finally, on your discussion board assignment, what I'd like for you to do is to find at least two terms in the glossary that pertain to what we've discussed tonight, uh, and then post in the discussion board uh, what you learned about the two terms. So pick two terms that you're not familiar with uh, before we talked about it uh, today. So go ahead and do that. Uh, pick a couple terms, kind of look at the definitions, pick some things that you're not familiar with, and then um, discuss those on the discussion board.